So that's going to be the first four 12s. What that does is that guarantees that I'll at least get one more 12 correct today. <laughs> but that does. Um, so that's uh, that's why we're doing that one. See, I'm, I'm giving you guys great information right now. You don't know it yet, but you're going to use a lot of these same statements when you have to stand in front of a crowd of eyeballs. <laughs> giving you guys out. I'm there. I'm melting them to you. You have to start conditioning your audience for your failure later that's going to happen. <laughs> you already started your demo. <coughs> no measurements. Don't do measurements. Yeah. Yeah. People will hold you to them. Don't do no measurements. No. Uh, there's a technical term for it, but I can't come up with it in my little brain right now. So we're just going to call it a dog ear method. Yeah. Ooh la la. <laughs> So, we have our stem that's coming off, not a very well drawn stem, but this is coming off of our, say, um, you know, our cantus leaf. Yeah. Right, we have our cantus leaf here, we got our stem here. Right here. We'll add that little bit there, just artistic layer. Boom. So, the dog ear method that I'm going to use to take and do this is this is a great way if you don't want to wire something together, you don't want to rivet something together as far as pin it on, or if you don't have an extra set of hands or the ability to grip at the thing with tongs. We are going over a fairly short distance, fairly small area, target area that we're trying to weld. And so this is the method I would personally choose probably given doing this job uh, that would make the most sense for me given this particular application. What I would do, in this case, is we are going to take this piece, this end piece, and we are going to peen a bit of material out both sides of a center line. So if this is our center line of our piece, through here, we are going to pick, peen out, and spread out this material here, and this material here. And we don't care how this ends up looking, Okay? We don't care how this material ends up looking. All we care about in the end is that we have peened out enough material that we've got some dog ears that we can then bend over and grab onto our scroll bundle with. That's going to hold itself on there for us while we forge well. The reason why I said in this particular application that I would choose this type of weld is because in this application, I'm not going to anything else, right? This is just a, this like an example scroll. So like if I had a tenon that I was going to produce on the end of this, right? And this was going to be tenon through on something. This would be a perfect application to use this type of this type of weld here, this little dog ear weld. Um, essentially, we're in, we're making a collar that is uh, like integrated in this, if you will. And then we're going to weld that collar up on the end of the bar. The other side, we can do the same thing. We can make dog ears and cross over the other one and weld that together. And that is a that is a valid historical way that it would be done if this thing here was ending in something like, say this was a bracket that was going into a fireplace frame. Right, so there's a fireplace crane sticking out here, and this is the bracket, and this is going to be tinning through the back plate, and it's going to swing, right? This weld would be a valid weld to do that. I'm not putting a tenon on here, it doesn't matter, but I'm, I'm not putting a tenon on here, so this type of weld is a great way of doing that. It's not a good weld, however, if we were going to lap weld onto another bar section. It can make another another scroll out of it. And the reason why it wouldn't be a great method is because that being on the top and bottom, that not being on the top and bottom, say if we were going to lap weld this. We've got our cantus leaf on here. You know, we got this little swelled out area where we kind of dog-eared it, right? Went around the other piece, right? And then we were on what? We're going to draw, draw a scarf down on this. We're going to scarf on another bar of welding. What we've created here is a little stress riser at the top and the bottom. 
of that weld because of that extra material that's tall. We've created a little stress riser. And then that stress riser, it kind of beats in. And when you go to bend it, it's going to crack right at the end of wherever this, this, this uh, dog, uh, you know, dog collar will be. So in this application, we wouldn't want to do this dog ear thing. We would just want a piece of bar stock. It comes around, and then we just, you know, we just put a little lap weld on it on the outside and maybe pin it pin it on and then weld it in and then draw down our sparks and then go on from there. We would not want to produce a crack on top of our welded plane. We would want to create a shear plane where that would then, when you stretch it, bend it, continue your scroll around, that would open up. You would have a crack. You'd have to fill in. Now the, 